Hey guys, welcome back to another video. So we're finally pretty much wrapping up our Kenobi coverage. There are probably maybe five more videos or so that I'd like to make regarding the show. And then the channel is going to get back to all the regular old stuff, fan fictions, comics, uh, animations, and you know, the whole lot. So today I'd like to discuss the one gripe that I had with the Vader versus Kenobi fight, which was an epic fight. But there was one thing in particular that I wish they would have added, and I think it would have had a lot more weight to A New Hope and to Revenge or Return of the Jedi, as well as that scene in particular. So the fighting, everything was cool. It was all, you know, we have talked about pretty much everything else. But the one thing that I wish they would have done is to just add a little more of Obi-Wan trying to turn Anakin one last time. And I know we got a little bit of that where he was like, I'm sorry for all of it. And it was a beautiful, you know, acting scene from Ewan McGregor. And I gotta say, Hayden's acting was on point as well. He was doing the whole Anakin movement where, you know, his, his head was down. I was talking to my buddy Palpy about this last night. His head was down and he was like looking up and he's doing that whole like sadistic, like smirk smile thing. It was kind of like the smile that he did when he was looking at Padme all weird. And she's like, she's like, it makes me uncomfortable when you look, look at me like that. Anyways, she got married to him. In that scene, if Obi-Wan had been, just been a little bit more like maybe mentioning Padme, you know, I would have loved if they had like a moment in there where they were fighting and maybe Obi-Wan was getting the upper hand at one point and they could have switched it a little bit where Obi-Wan would have been like, they have a, a, a pause and Obi-Wan saying, you know, what would she have thought? What would she think if she were here right now? And just Vader goes insane. And then maybe he like cracks the ground. That would have been pretty cool. You know, we could see him just go absolutely full of rage and hatred. And I always kind of compared Vader to, or at least his powers to the Hulk, where the angrier he gets, you know, there is no real ceiling, so to speak, with Vader. The more angry he gets, the more powerful he becomes. So if he really taps into his hatred and his emotions in general, just sadness and overall missing Padme, which is really the root of everything here is Padme. I think we could have seen some pretty crazy stuff. Obviously he can't be more powerful than the Emperor now that he is in the state that he's in, but he still, I don't think, is reaching his full potential for what he's capable of at this point. And I think had Obi-Wan actually pushed him a little bit or maybe tried to turn him a little bit be like look it's not too late you can still change back come with me we can make things right something like that you know I think it would have added a lot more weight to the scene where Luke is trying to turn his father in Return of the Jedi just before they go to the second Death Star and meet with the Emperor so I think if they had done a little bit of that it could have played more into Obi-Wan once thought as you do. I feel like that was maybe a little bit of a missed opportunity where they could have had a little more dialogue revolving around Padme and revolving around turning back to the light. And I believe it would have made for something that was, you know, interesting dialogue from Anakin. But I guess, you know, when he said that I'm not your failure, Obi-Wan, you didn't kill Anakin Skywalker, I did. At that point, Obi-Wan's like, well, I guess there's no real chance of me turning him back to the light at this point, so... That was always something I thought about in Revenge of the Sith, is that during their duel, Obi-Wan didn't really try and listen to Anakin all that much. He sort of just, you know, while Anakin was talking to him, and it wasn't aggressive yet at that point, he was like, well, only a Sith deals in absolutes, and I will do what I must. And, I mean... Yeah, Anakin did some horrible things, and he was pretty far gone, and Obi-Wan needed to stop him, but I think if Obi-Wan had maybe just talked to him a little bit more, maybe there could have been something that would have changed, perhaps. Like when Anakin said, from my point of view, the Jedi are evil, I feel like if Obi-Wan had just been like, why? How? Instead of just giving him that stone-cold blank answer, the brick wall answer, you know, there's nothing else to come back from that other than be defensive, sort of, he would have been like, well, then you are lost! And then, well, of course, Anakin's going to be more angry. It's already a heated situation. So I feel like if he had actually inquired a little bit more, be like, Anakin, like, what went wrong? Like, why do you think like this? What are you, what are you going through right now? Maybe Anakin would have opened up. You know, he was an emotional wreck. And in this state as Vader, I feel like he would maybe have broken down a little bit and opened up as well, especially if Obi-Wan had maybe mentioned Padme, they would have gone through a bigger fight and then it would have paused for a minute again and they could have talked about it. And I feel like that's something that we could have gotten, which would have been sick. And it was really the only time because if they fight again now, it's just going to be kind of weird and lame. So if Obi-Wan had actually mentioned Padme, it could have, it's very dangerous because it could have take, totally taken Vader 
off the rails on the other end. And maybe he would have even beat Obi-Wan because he wouldn't have been blinded by his feelings for his old master, like Palpatine said. So perhaps it's a good thing that Obi-Wan didn't. But on the other hand, it could have opened him up and maybe broken him down a little bit. And he would have maybe remembered a little bit more. Now, if you remember, there was that moment of conflict, big conflict. Like the whole thing, he's a conflict, he's conflicted the whole time. But there was that one moment where Obi-Wan was like, I'm sorry for all of it. And we see Anakin and he's looking like he's like, he's got that same look that Anakin always had when he was conflicted and sad. And he was like, and then he looks back up. It's like he's going through pain and he's going through the anguish of everything that happened and everything that he did. Padme, the Jedi, him, Obi-Wan. And he's just now trying to get rid of that feeling with the anger. And you see when that switch happens. So it's like there was that little bit of that moment. And I feel like if Obi-Wan had maybe like deactivated his lightsaber, stepped in and been like, look, like, I don't want to fight you. Like, I messed up. I made a mistake, you know, what would Qui-Gon think? What would Padme think? I think all of these things could have really maybe, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe like, it, it will really, it depends on how, you know, the, the person writing the show wants to. But um, if I were writing that, I would have put like, Padme loved you, I loved you, you know, everyone loved you. Like, what went wrong? What happened to Anakin? And maybe he would have like had a moment where he was like, breaks down and maybe like talks to Obi-Wan about it or something. And we could have gotten some really cool dialogue regarding... Anakin's point of view of everything, because a lot of people, they always say like, oh, Anakin was crazy, he was sadistic, and yeah, sure he was, but at the end of the day, George didn't write him to be this crazy, sadistic person only. He was doing a lot of things out of his own selfishness, out of love, what he thinks is love, control, he's controlling her, trying to control everything, his life, and a lot of that stems from all of the torment and trauma that he had as a kid, you know, being a slave to Watto and then, you know, being a slave to the Jedi, now a slave to politics, now a slave to his powers um, or, you know, his rather his want for his powers, his need for his powers. And so I think with his past and his mother dying, I think that really changed a lot for Anakin. And I don't think he was really ever the same person after that. I think his mother dying was something that he felt was all of his doing, all of his responsibility and his fault. And I feel like he blamed Obi-Wan for that, right? As we see in episode two, he blamed the Jedi for all of that stuff that they were holding him back. And so in the end, of course, when they, you know, everything they did with Ahsoka, uh, he was losing their trust. He was losing trust in them entirely. And we see this moment when he's actually kind of talking about it for the first time, really, to Palpatine in his office, just before Palpatine tells him that he's a Sith Lord. So the only difference between Obi-Wan and Palpatine is that Palpatine was much more patient. He listened to Anakin. He let Anakin talk and get his feelings out and vent to him. And Obi-Wan kind of didn't really do that. The Jedi didn't really do that. They didn't really come up with solutions. They sort of just said, feel, deal with it, right? Like when Anakin was saying he's having dreams of his mother, Obi-Wan's just like, be mindful of your thoughts, they betray you. And then when he was talking about Padme dying, or someone close to him dying to Yoda, Yoda is just like, let go of everything you fear to lose. Like, they didn't really help him, you know? Anakin had a lot of problems, a lot of mental issues, but they did not help the situation with someone, such a special case. And I feel like you need to be a little more sensitive, a little more grounded, and a little more uh, helpful to someone who is maybe going through a little darker time than perhaps someone else, like, I don't know, like any of the other Jedi that were just brought into the Jedi temple when they were babies, and they don't really know any better, they don't really remember their family, which, which Obi-Wan kind of remembers his family, which was interesting. So if we had gotten that one little moment, like a couple couple pieces of dialogue, we like, like, what would Padme think? Or if he worded it nicely, you know, maybe we could have seen the evolution of Obi-Wan's psychology where he's not so like brash and like, then you all lost. You could just be like, well, we loved you. We know what happened. What, what did we do wrong? And then Anakin would be like, or Vader would be like, oh, you guys didn't do anything wrong. It's just, I, and then he would get more mad or something. But maybe there would be that little, that little moment and it could tie into Return of the Jedi. And I would have loved to have seen that. But anyways, uh, I really enjoyed the finale. I thought it was great. So I don't really have any complaints about that episode at all. Um, but let me know what you guys think. Do you wish we got some dialogue regarding Padme or regarding Qui-Gon or um, maybe Obi-Wan trying to turn Anakin back to the light somehow? Uh, let me know. 
I hope you have a great day. Thanks for watching today's video. And I hope you're excited for all the regular videos to come soon. And of course, you know, we got Andor end of August. We got um, Bad Batch season two end of September. Those shows are going to be overlapping. We got so much stuff that we're going to be doing. So many watch parties. It's going to be like two, three watch parties a week, probably. So no sleep for me. But uh, I live for it. I'm excited for it. And uh, I can't wait to have fun with you guys. Love you all. Catch you later. Have a great day.